Since the earliest days of the cryptocurrency age, many have looked at successful tokens with a sense of awe and also some sadness for having missed out on the opportunity to build what is called generational wealth. That reaction has led to many tens of thousands of cryptocurrencies being created, most of which really do little or nothing, but which all enter the world, at least, with the hopes of their creators and the folks who speculate on them. For a long time, those projects patterned themselves after Bitcoin or Ethereum. But during the last bull market, as Dogecoin skyrocketed on the back of a billionaire's tweets, the age of dog money had seemingly begun. Fast forward a few years now, and the market is filled with tokens claiming to be the next big meme coin, most of them branded after Shiba Inu dogs, again, uh, on the back of the Dogecoin token. But is it sustainable? The answer, unsurprisingly, is probably not. Well, I'm going to throw this one to you for first comments. It depends on what you mean by sustainable, Adam, because it does seem that it's at least cyclical and that cycle seems very sustainable because it keeps happening every few years, right? So historically, if you look at Bitcoin's chart, it's also very cyclical. The thing about it that's kind of nice is it maintains its price pretty well. Like it probably drops between like 70 and 50% during a pull down and then it builds right back up. But over time, it's up and to the right and increasingly so. Dogecoin and some of these other coins are also cyclical. The problem with them is they typically draw down all the way back to where they started. So they get really, really low, go down like 90% and then another 90%. So you don't really make any wealth there. But if you stick around and wait for the next uptick, you can make some money here and there. I'm not saying it's a good strategy, but you can do it. That being said, it does look right, like right now, this lightest mania that we saw from Elon Musk putting the Dogecoin picture on Twitter is kind of coming to an end. Maybe Dogecoin is down 5% over 24 hours according, according to Coindesk. Also saying that some of the other ones are starting to draw down a little bit. And I think that's sort of how these things happen, right? Like they get into the attention, the headlines, the bots pick it up, the bots start bidding on these things and it goes up for a little bit. And then the attention wanes, we stop caring about it until next time Elon tweets about it. That's my whole framework for thinking about these things. That's the juice I got. Jen, over to you. Well, total kind of unrelated note that popped up while I was reading the story is, remember when Elon had a Twitter babysitter that was like mandatory <laughs> by the SEC and now he yeah. owns Twitter? What mm. world do we live in? So I don't know. I don't know how, how many times Elon is just going to continue trolling us with this, with the, the, the dog coins, you know, like Tesla. I don't know if Tesla still accepts Doge for, for merch, but they tried that thing. Now we have Doge on Twitter. The, uh, um, you know, degen traders are reacting. The coin's going up and down. Like, what is the actual story here? I don't think there's nothing. I think it is completely unsustainable. And which meme coin is going... Like, will you talk about the cycle, but I think every cycle we see different meme coins pump and dump, and it's not one that's just sustainable. It's just this, like, thing, this phenomenon that happens. And someone in the analysis said that there could be long-term growth for the tokens if fundamental features strengthen in the coming months. But I don't think this is about fundamental features. I think the features that people want exist out there and you can go out and find the features that you want if you want to play with crypto. Um, I think there's a lot more that goes in to products and fundamental features like making it accessible and marketing and maintaining momentum and keeping your community engaged. And so, yeah, I'm with the not sustainable ones on this. Adam, I'm going to toss it back to you. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, I think that I think the dynamic that's going on here is really one of something demonstrating success and then becoming something that people are like, oh, I've missed the opportunity there, which then opens the opportunity to create a new version of it that is much, much, much cheaper, usually has a much larger supply, even of some of these very large supply tokens, so that the per token price itself can be very small. And there's kind of a quirk of human, uh, you know, like the way our brains work with numbers, where it's like, when when the value of a thing is so small, but the supply of it is so large, we can't really square those easily in our in our heads. And so instead, we're just like, oh, this is super cheap without taking into account. Yeah, it's super cheap, but there's 10,000 times more of them than other stuff. So I, I think the question for me is like, how many steps down that ladder can you go, right? So like if, you know, Dogecoin is a reaction to things like Bitcoin and Shiba Inu is a reaction to things like Dogecoin and Floki is a reaction to things like Shiba Inu, right? And you just want to keep on going down the list, you know, like you kind of have to have these things be successful in order for people to be like, yeah, I should create my own version of them too. So I don't know. It's you a, should. it's, 
it's kind of a it's it's a it's a wild thing. Launching tokens is is a complicated game that can make you a lot of money if you have few scruples. Can make you even more money if you can pull it off. But it just seems like a lot of your life to sink into something where it's basically just allowing people to gamble on your version of a thing. I don't know. I think I'm really boring as I get older. Well, <laughs> hey, you, you've been really fun on this show. You, I was going to say, so like, to you, Adam, <laughs> super entertaining. We should launch a hash, hash coin. Yeah, uh, a Doge coin derivative on the hash. That's what you should do. I mean, Doge you can make hash, a lot of money, Doge but... Hash. Doge hash, yeah, you can make a lot of money to your point, Adam, but you can also end up in jail. And SEC doesn't seem to like these things that much, so something to definitely keep in mind. Eventually, you could end up buying bars, but before that, you I've get already pretty said on this sh- on this show, if we end up in jail, I am telling on everyone. Like, do not include <laughs> me in any in any kind of plan. That figures. I'll give up the whole story. Yep. That <laughs> figures. Yeah. Last comment on this. So that the expert opinion. I, I always love seeing these Dogecoin articles because you know, we're, as reporters, we got to go talk to people and get the inside scoop from the experts on these things. And then you present Dogecoin to an expert, and they have to opine on it. And I just don't think they like it either. It's like, okay, well, how am I supposed to give my opinion on this? How do I talk about the tokenomics of Dogecoin? Not a lot there, but you have to give some remarks. So I don't know. I always take comments from the experts on meme coins with a grain of salt. 